Will I just stand here? Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. Go for it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I changed it up. You oh, changed I it went, up. I went from pushing in to I'm an, inno I'm an innocent. Yeah, this is my first time. Yeah. You're my first experience. Come on. But thank you. You've, it had, was, you've had like uh, quadruple the fights I've had. This is true. I'm not letting people hit me though. Huh? Not letting people hit me though. That's true. That's true. It's a totally different experience. Okay, I can count on you for good training help. Thank you. You betcha. Every fight that I have is major. You know, I can sense my life can either go this way or this way after a fight, a win or a loss. And um, I knew that I could beat Macy. I just had to go out and do it. You know, I knew she was very dangerous. And uh, it actually did more for me than I had thought. Um, the fight itself was a good performance for me. Um, I've gotten a lot of accolades and hopefully more opportunities will come from it. The person who truly inspired me to get into mixed martial arts was Laura De August. Laura, we have some unfinished business. Last time we fought, I didn't show you what I was made of, but this time's gonna be different. So I wanna see you again, in a ring or a cage or anywhere you want. So to all you promoters out there, make it happen, now. We had been grappling against each other in the Naga tournaments, so she was kind of like my grappling rival. And then she decided to fight, and I looked at her and I thought, I can do it too. If she can do it, I can do it. So that was kind of like a rival like reason that I did it. Um, but I really enjoyed watching Matt Serra uh, fight. I thought he was so cool, you know, jiu-jitsu base, but he fought. Um, Aaron Riley really inspired me as well, his fight against Robbie Lawler. Coach John Wood is a great mentor for me, a friend, and uh, really inspirational. Man, he works so hard, you know, it's, fighters have to train themselves and work hard, but also coaches work hard, you know, he's, you know, all, up all night helping people cut weight, he's traveling everywhere, you know, he has his own little nagging injuries, but he holds mitts for us, you know, so I really respect Coach John, and, um, you know, he, I really clicked with him. Uh, the way he explains things really helps me. I get frustrated with striking easily, but just the way he explains things really, you know, helps me understand. And um, I wouldn't be in the UFC if it weren't for him. Actually, I've been looking at other people's pictures and stuff, and I see people do that all the time. Not that that is good. I'm like, uh huh. Other people do that. They do. Everybody. Does. Yeah. If everybody did everything right. I'd have no job. I need you guys to be kind of shitty. Keep me around. <laughs> I need to have one too. Try to look, so pick a target, so I want you to start moving. Dead center at my chest. One, one, two. Good! Good. There you go. Again. Good. Nice, Roxy. One, one, two. Good. Good. That one's actually hitting me directly in the chin, so it's where, I mean, it's where I want it. One, one, two. Good. Awesome. I will show you in just a second. Can somebody put this on me? Because I struggled for like five hey, minutes to put it on. Let's see what I can do. This is the front. This, wait, this is the front? This is the front. Oh, that's the front. Okay. Just flip it on. Okay. Yeah, like Bang. That. Is it, am I straight? Is my hair straight? Everybody always underestimates me based on how I come across, except for my opponents and their coaches, which is nice. Um, you know, I'm kind of unassuming, kind of nerdy. That's great, you know, I'll just always be the underdog and my friends will always make money betting off of me, right? Man, you know how many people are still messaging me like, oh, thanks for beating Macy, I made so much money off of you. I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> I have heard that there were big bets put down. I actually read on Twitter that somebody put 100,000 on me 
and he probably can buy like several houses by now. Um, I'm a little thrifty. Uh, I consider that I have good money managing abilities. You know, uh, I worked in Japan and saved my money so that I could come and quit my job and focus on MMA. So after, you know, I finally got into the UFC, um, you know, I really wanted to be smart. My father is in business, so he's my official financial advisor. He gave me advice on starting an IRA, investing in some uh, medium to low risk mutual funds. So every time I fight, I always put money in my IRA. Uh, I ask him, how's the stock market doing, dad? And he gives me all this information which I don't really listen to and then says, buy the stock. I'm like, okay, <laughs> uh, rather, uh, stock rather, that, rather um, uh, mutual funds. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Fortunate I have him, very fortunate I have him. Thanks, Dad. And uh, yeah, it's, you never know when you're gonna fight again and make your next paycheck or get hurt and have to retire, so I wanna be really smart with my earnings. Man, if I had to go back 10 years, that would be 2010. I was in the middle of a losing streak then. I would probably tell myself, just keep going, because at that point, like, if I had, everyone asked me, would you have moved back to the States sooner? And if I had, I wouldn't have gone on The Ultimate Fighter, I wouldn't have met John Wood, I wouldn't have come to Syndicate, so my life wouldn't, ha I might not have made it into the UFC, you know? So I think the way things happened were how things had to happen. So I would just tell myself, like, keep going, it'll be okay. I don't know. <laughs> Serena just fought in Invicta, so I'm trying to get this up for Mike to watch. We have like a special handshake now. Yeah, it's called Corona's handshake. Like right. that. Well, you cannot get your elbow into your mouth. <laughs> you cannot get your elbow into any of your own orifice. That is impossible. None. So the Corona handshake is now like that. Right. Just bang. Oh my gosh. And now you don't get your orifice. Guys. I'm in your orifice. Tonto. I mean, pronto. Please. It's a nogi match, it's just one five minute round. Okay. When's that? March 29th. I'm doing a submission underground. It's Chael Sonnen's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thing in Oregon. That'd be awesome. So I'm excited. I haven't done nogi jiu jitsu in, man, like, since I ever, like. Since I moved to America, even in Japan, I didn't do it. So, what was that 16 gi. years? Probably. Dang. Just gi. And then MMA. Um, so. Oh, what's the de what was the thought process? Um, my jujitsu is always better than, well, usually better than my MMA opponents. So, it's like kind of a different game now that I'm going like against like a high level. Jiu-Jitsu girl, no gi. She's like 4 and no amateur fighter. Grab it, yep, and now that acts as your leg for now. Now you have time to pull my legs in, step over with this leg to replace your hand. Yes. Oh, now, and slide back. And don't, don't fall so hard. Yeah, just How do I not fall? Uh, just uh, slide your hip to my hip. Slide your Instead hip. Instead of falling down. Yeah. Like that? And now slide straight down. It sounds more controlled. Oh. Yeah. And then now fall. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't want to like fall off to the side. Hold on here. And in. Bring everything in tight. Yeah. I just kind of slide my hip to your hip. Control. Pull me down. And then I can turn. What? This is such a nice one. <laughs> Um, One more time. And that's right, so I'm gonna go for the deep half. Uh, pinch your seat over my head hard. Do my what? Like, I'm gonna get in. Oh, okay. Right, over here, I'm gonna go in. Yes, yeah, sitting over my head, sitting on my chest. And now I can't fight hands. Yeah. Oh, what? Sorry, not like that. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yep. <laughs> nice. Thanks, Jerry. For sure. I'll drill that. I think that's good for you today. Thank you so much. Always, always. This Let is helpful know. just knowing, I mean, just doing the attack as well. It helps me know where it comes from and yeah, how it yeah. works, you know? For sure. This is going to take a long time for me, I think, yeah. to build it. This is one of my goals, actually, nice. to get better at leg locks. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to. These are like a few things. Like I said, Bendy, that guy hit me. It's amazing at um, knee bars. Like, right. I don't think there's anyone in the world better at just the knee bars yeah. than that guy, you know? So, uh, 
know, we've competed a bunch and he's done this. He showed me some of their stuff. That's like the main thing that stuck with me because he's hit me with so many times. And then the little bit of heel hook stuff, like this is all stuff that I can yeah. get down. I'm not going to show you anything that's like theoretical to me because I'm not great at them. But these things I've been, I've been able to do. So. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, of course. so helpful. I appreciate it. I don't really know what's next. I have a potential fight in Lauren Murphy. She called me out. I said yes, but you never know what the UFC has in mind. So I'm just going to keep training. And man, I feel like my life is a race. How fast can I improve? How fast can I get stronger? Can I surpass the speed of other my opponent's rates of improvement? So every week I'm just in here grinding and enjoying the journey. What I learned most from being on The Ultimate Fighter was, fun I guess, how to function in... I don't know. <laughs> I like, I was trying to maintain my own schedule and eating habits and stuff, but having to listen to other people. So I'm very like, I get like nervous and anxious if plans don't go my way. So I kind of had to learn to chill out and kind of not be bothered by, you know, when I wasn't in control of my life and um, interviews. I learned a lot about how to give interviews because I had to do it every day. <laughs> uh, I went to college with the goal of becoming a translator, so I majored in Japanese language and literature. Um, but after studying for five years, my Japanese was pretty good, probably like middle school level, but um, not completely fluent, and I knew that I needed to immerse myself in the language, so that's why I moved to Japan and got a job. But teaching English all day doesn't mean you're speaking Japanese all day, it means you're speaking English all day. And if I had just gone home and studied every night, I, I might have gotten the ability, but I wasn't willing to do that. I wanted to train, so I was just, I couldn't like commit the time. Kind of like in college I was training, so I kept getting B's all the time, as opposed to like if I just quit everything and just studied, I might have gotten A's. That was just my choice, my life choice. So then when I kind of realized my life was going that way, I just kept going and kept, you know, I realized my martial arts career was important to me too. Um, that was kind of like, I realized that along my journey. I loved living in Japan. I lived there for eight years right out of college. I taught English and at the same time I trained every day in a gym there. Um, it was great. I didn't quite fulfill my dream of becoming a translator. Uh, my Japanese level just wasn't good enough, but um, I really met a lot of people, um, a lot of valuable friendships, a lot of great experiences. I feel like I've lived a lifetime of five different people by now. I've just done so many things. What first got me interested in the Japanese culture was anime. You know, Dragon Ball Z, um, Naruto, One Piece are my favorites. I really liked their hard work ethic, um, their philosophy of like always get back up, never stay down, you know, you gotta win no matter what. Like, it really inspires me. Um, Japan is just such a hard working culture and um, very honorable, you know, so I. I try to be very loyal and very honorable and just, you know, be a good martial artist. And it's, it was easy to do in Japan. There are so many differences. It's like a night and day difference between training in Japan and training here at Syndicate. Um, in Syndicate and in America, there are MMA coaches that really like focus on the pro fighter. And I feel like John Wood has really guided me like, okay, every day when I have my mitt sessions, I don't have to say, coach, please teach me this. He already has a plan what he needs to teach me and help, help me get better. But I feel like when I was in Japan, I just kind of went to class and everybody was there. And um, if I went to the general class, we just did a move and trained it and then rolled or sparred. And then in the pro practice, everybody just sparred. And then afterwards you say, hey, Kaudo Uno, what did you think of my double leg takedown? Oh, I think you should blah, blah, blah. So it was kind of like collective, which Japanese is a very collective society, but I think that style of training is outdated. You know, I think maybe now it's changing. I don't know, I've been here for six years, but that wasn't helping me grow. Like I needed a coach. So when I came to America, I sought out the coaches. I don't care how many famous people train at your gym. That's not helping me get better. I need a coach. So that's why when I took John's class, I was like, that coach, he can help me. I, I'm gonna join Syndicate. I'm very excited for uh, Jojo versus uh, Shevchenko. You know, I think they're both very talented, very strong and very skilled. Um, you know, people are counting Jojo out, but I don't think so. You know, I think she has the ability to pull off the win. And um, I'm looking forward to a good fight, and I can't wait to help Jojo prepare.